good evening i hope uh, all of you are able to hear me uh, i am akila i work as a solution architect with tcs and today i would be presenting uh, the application that we have developed on openstack platform for nfv so what is this application about and what have we done uh, this is uh, a framework that enables validation of network functions and uh, what we mean by validation is uh, to validate reference architectures um, functional verification a verification of uh, the various life cycle events that a virtual network function or probably a service that comprises of multiple virtual network functions goes through and also some real time diagnostics which would help uh, uh, the person who is using this framework who's actually testing his solution uh to simplify troubleshooting and debugging so this is a platform that we are talking about of all the list of features that i mentioned we'll first look at uh, how we are deploying the service when we talk about deploying a vnf or um, a network service based on these vnf they are uh, a few important phases that um, we look at it starts off with onboarding the network service wherein uh, the configuration uh, of that network service is captured into predefined templates like the network service descriptor which gives a high level overview of what all components are there in this network service what are the different networks that are there what are the entry points into that particular network and what are the different flavors that are present on this particular network the next phase is the deployment which is probably the most complex because it involves coordination across the different layers likewise the uh, nfa orchestrator the infrastructure manager your virtual network function managers and the vnf itself uh, in this phase the service is brought up with day zero configuration the next step is uh, or the most or one of the important uh, things is monitoring service for various aspects whether you want to understand if you want to scale your service or uh, if you want to recognize a fault through monitoring uh, you can do it in this phase and uh, the update where you want to uh, we are referring to the configuration updates of the network services only uh, not software updates and the final phase is bringing the whole thing down cleaning it up so that resource consumption comes down to zero so this is what uh, we mean by end to end service orchestration this is a high level reference architecture of uh, the solution that we have built so we have uh, you see a big blue box here marked as vnf svc this is a centralized daemon that runs on the openstack controller it provides a rest api and it is responsible for onboarding now what are the different things that we do when we onboard a network service the descriptors are given to uh, this component it uh, acts like a typical compiler so it understands each and every aspect of these descriptors converts it into metadata and puts it into its internal repositories uh, and why do we do this because when we are asked to create a service we save a lot of time by defining it in a format which will give us data readily to be deployed uh, on openstack uh, now we when we talk about uh, onboarding the descriptors the tosca is uh, a well known format there are also um, existing service orchestration solutions so you might need compatibility so what we have done is we have implemented uh, a plugin based uh, uh, interpretation of these descriptors reading the metadata in the descriptors we understand how this a uh, particular descriptor needs to be onboarded and the right kind of translator is invoked uh, to convert this descriptor into metadata that is the first phase and uh, also some preparatory steps like onboarding the images into glance and uh, also computing the quota requirements for deploying various flavors of the service these kind of things are done during the uh, onboarding of the templates once the onboarding is done you have uh, your service in your catalog and you will be able to deploy it in the next phase when the user request for a deployment either through a rest api or through a cli uh, vnfsvc coordinates all the different components that are involved including 
your OpenStack, the VNF managers, and uh, pushing configurations and everything is coordinated by VNF SVC. It uh, derives the deployment order because services are not a flat deployment. You can't just um, run the VMs anything at any time. They are interdependencies that could uh, exist between these virtual network functions. So this information is derived by this component and then it ensures that these uh, virtual network functions are deployed in the proper order. Um, and uh, one simple use case is suppose I am deploying a, a network service which has a node that distributes IP addresses to each of these, uh, each of the other VNFs, then that is a node that should go in first and that uh, the configuration of that node or the IP address should be passed on to the rest of the VNFs. That is one use case. So when we are deploying uh, these VNF, we are able to dynamically extract the data. Typically, you would hard code or pre-configure such parameters, which is not required if you're able to extract it dynamically during deployment. Once uh, it starts off deploying at least one VNF, it triggers uh, the launching of a VNF manager. The way we have implemented the VNF manager, or probably first I'll talk about the requirements that we have for a VNF manager, because we're we are talking about a platform where we are able to uh, validate any third party VNF. It should be possible that we should be able to talk to them. Um, so this VNF manager is more of a framework. And uh, you see small rectangular boxes on this VNF manager. These are what we refer to as drivers. So this is like a framework which loads the required drivers that it needs to talk to the VNFs in that particular service. And uh, we have well-defined uh, API that needs to be invoked. For example, uh, the, when, when a VNF is first launched, the initialization API is what you would look at. And when you want to update a configuration, uh, a similar API. And on the other side, it could be uh, any protocol that runs on L3, likewise a NetCon for SNMP or anything that is internal to the driver. Uh, once the VNF is launched, that is, uh, you can have a prepackaged VM like a firewall or you can have something where uh, you need to go and install the software on top of that. Either of these configurations, once it comes up, the VNF manager pushes the day zero configuration onto the VNF. Now this is repeated for each of the virtual network functions in the service and the service is brought up. This uh, is what happens in the deployment phase. And uh, the next one is the update. There is an API that or a REST interface that we provide uh, for being able to update the configuration on the VNF. The decommissioning is uh, also, I mean, it's a process of clean, cleaning up things. So it keeps track of whatever resources it has consumed and makes sure that it has cleaned up. Now, one aspect is monitoring. Um, what exactly do we refer to by monitoring? Where uh, this, is a, this is a phase where we are trying to understand what is the load on the system or derive a performance metrics which gives us some uh, indication about how the net, what is the state of the network service. It could be based on silometer, but sometimes you would require some more information. Um, it is possible to extract this from the VNF uh, through the VNF manager and run it through an algorithm. And this algorithm is not standard. It differs based on the, uh, the service that you are deploying. So we have a pluggable KPI algorithm uh, we have few predefined ones, but it is also easy to add new ones because we are trying to validate, uh, fetch the value of uh, this KPI and expose it. You can read it through a REST API and based on this KPI value, you can trigger scaling. There is API also available for scaling. Um, you can scale using REST, uh, I mean OpenStack API also. So why do you need a separate API uh, for scaling the VNF? Because VNF scaling is not just uh, launching a new VM. It has to go through the entire process that happened when you were creating the network service. It has to be configured. It has to be uh, loaded with the right kind of software. So these are the additional steps that go in. Of course, launching the VM is done through OpenStack API only. But the rest of the uh, stuff is implemented by the higher layer, which is, which is your VNF SVC. This is the overall reference architecture of the OpenVNF manager. And you will be able to find it on GitHub. Uh, I will probably run through a, a quick demo now so that we can relate to whatever I have explained. Uh, it is a recorded demo because it is quite lengthy. So 
So this is a setup that we have. Whatever framework I was talking about is deployed on a VM because th this can be quickly um, created. Uh, we have a simple CLI for deploying this framework because this is supposed to enable full automation. It can integrate either with your CI CD uh, solutions, your DevOps, or into your existing system verification suite where you are able to enable uh, the orchestration and also reuse the test framework that you would already have because IMS has not inherently changed. The way you validate IMS has not changed. Uh, the functional verification part. What has changed is how you actually build that IMS service is what has changed. So you can even integrate it with your existing verification solutions. And uh, we are using a third party traffic generator from TerraVM for executing this uh, demo. So we are triggering the service creation where we are onboarding the network templates. And uh, these small blue bars that you see here is what uh, we refer to as event notifications. Now, when you deploy a service, it takes quite a, a good amount of time. And you would have to understand what exactly is going on in the background. And you would also need updates on uh, the nodes as and when they are deployed, so that you can extract that configuration and use it for configuring the rest of the system. That would save you a lot of time. So we have an event framework, which gives you continuous notifications about the state of the network service, as well as the metadata, um, whatever configuration has gone into that network service or, um, or any such information. And uh, we are demonstrating the deployment of a clear water IMS here. So you see that the nodes are coming up one after the other. Um, And once the network service is deployed, it will um, trigger the traffic generator, which is the TerraVM. It will configure the TerraVM to, to speak to the right node, which is a SIP proxy. And uh, TerraVM will be able to kick off um, the test verification for SIP, likewise registering the users, making calls between the different users, and uh, getting the results. This is the TerraVM solution. This is also running on the VM, which has just been deployed. And uh, you will see that the configuration will come up. It is coming through the test framework, all this configuration. And it executes the test cases. And uh, once the test execution completes, you will see that it will also perform the cleanup and um, it will log in the results. Yes, it is clean up everything and uh, few of the data is reported. Apart from this, uh, the other aspect that we are working on for which uh, I don't have a demo ready is the diagnostics. Um, what do we mean when we say diagnostics? We mean um, that we are looking at capturing network traffic, correlating it with what exactly we are doing at that point of time, and giving some meaningful result on the screen so that the user is able to understand what is happening. If there is a failure, he will be able to derive some sort of a conclusion from it, which will help him in troubleshooting. Now, for diagnostics, there are a couple of things that we had executed. We used um, Ansible to deploy TCP dump on the host interfaces, capture that information, then analyze it and show it to the users. But that is very, very offline. It shows uh, data very lately. So what we have done is we have used this feature called Tap as a Service, which is available in OpenStack. It gives you uh, an API, which enables you to mirror the traffic that is going on to a network interface. We have built a small... Uh, a packet analyzer based on DPDK. This pulls in the network traffic. It quickly segregates it. We pick the packets that are of interest to us, 
wrap them up in um, with the right information that the user is ready to see because we don't want to throw a full packet starting from um, L1 to the application layer to the user for de debugging. That really doesn't help. So we pick up uh, whatever is relevant to that test scenario. So if it is a SIP protocol that we are doing here, we can configure that analyzer to give us SIP messages from specific nodes. We do that, and then we pass on this information to the user um, who is executing the test case. And uh, this is more real time than what we could get with a TCP dump. So that is one other feature that we are uh, working on. So that is pretty much what I have to share today. Thank you.